Hey everyone, this is Art Muffin. So today I wanted to just kind of quickly go through the process uh, that I went through for painting this this image for Four Phantoms Brewery. I'm mostly just gonna go through how I did the red fabrics. So I'm just gonna quickly go through the layer setup, the textures and the brushes and palette, blah, blah, blah. All right, so I'm gonna minimize this. All right, so I have this this canvas set up. I'm gonna go to full screen here. As you can see here up in the top left, I've got the only two brushes I really used for the entire painting. And both of them are Kyle's brushes, which are brushes that you can download uh, from the Adobe website for free. I assume you need Creative Cloud in order to do that, um, but you may not. You might just have to give them an email or it, they're probably free out there. But one of the things I wanted to do with this was use brushes and textures that are free so you don't have to go out and buy anything. Um, so up in the right hand side here, uh, Lucha Madonna by Jan van Eyck, 1436 in the public domain. So what that is, is this, well, part of this image uh, is what I pulled from the internet that we're going to use as reference to paint some of that red fabric. Uh, I figured that would be easier so you can kind of see the direction that we're going in, what the end result would look like. And if you're just learning to use some of these tools, it might be helpful for you to be able to see kind of what, what the end result um, should be so you kind of know where you are with your progress. Uh, so I'm gonna hide this for a minute. So over here on the right, as you can see, I've got top layer texture. Okay, so I'm hiding that and notice nothing changes, that's okay. So background texture, what this is, is I took a piece of watercolor paper in the real world, the physical world, and painted on it using, I think it was burnt umber and raw sienna um, with kind of a big brush just just to catch some of the tooth in the paper some of the texture in the paper to give it a nice textured feel and then i scanned that and imported it into photoshop you don't have to do that you could just look for a background with watercolor paper texture online and you could probably find one and just drop it in there but i like starting with these because this is what i use um, when i start doing my Book of Gosh paintings uh, because I want them to look like they're old and aged. Uh, so I'll usually start by painting um, just a big sheet of watercolor paper with acrylics and I get something that looks like this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna unhide this. I'm gonna come over and grab this. Um, so I'm just gonna grab part of this here. Like this is a pretty cool little shape we got going on. There's some lights and darks and midtones. So we'll have a few different things to focus on. So I'm just going to copy this and then paste it in place so that we don't, we're not covering up the whole canvas. So now I've just got this piece. I'm using a, um, a Wacom Cintiq Pro. I would suggest some kind of tablet if you're going to be doing any kind of digital painting. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to be painting on a screen. I had it in Tuos for years that I used so I wasn't painting on a screen I was just painting on the tablet and looking at the screen so of course now you can do things on iPads and all kinds of stuff so you know whatever budget you have you know do what you can with it so as you can see over here on the right I've got a folder here or sorry a layer here um, within the folder place your artwork here so that's what we're going to do so I'm going to go and open up these brushes. I've got these pretty well organized um, for what I normally do. Um, but like I said, I, I'm really only using these two Kyle's brushes, Real Oils, Sargent 2017. And then from the Kyle's paint box, there's something called a wet blender. And I've dragged those both up into the top level here so that uh, I can just grab them. So I'm just gonna start with this. And since this is supposed to be quick, 
uh, I'm just going to pull colors directly from the reference. Um, so I've got the brush selected. All right, so if I hold down Alt, it turns into an eyedropper. So I can just pull colors uh, directly from the painting. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to grab this mid-tone. Let's go a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm just going to paint to the right of this thing and just kind of get this basic shape blocked in just real quick. Actually, I'm going to, just to make this faster, I'm just going to paint right over top of this thing. Uh, so I'm going to swap colors because now I want to grab a darker color because then I can kind of use that as an outline. Um, so I'm just going to start drawing this in real quick. You can't really see it because I'm painting underneath our image here, but now you can see it. So I will pull this down here so that I'm drawing on top so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. So I'm pretty much just blocking in the major shapes. Uh, this is coming from here. Whoops, <laughs> now I'm painting on the wrong one. Pay attention to which layers you're on. All right, so just very roughly doing this. And this is pretty much how I would have been doing um, the Mari Laud painting that I did. Um, I just did rough pencils just to get it kind of drawn in. And then I literally went and painted over top of those pencils. I did it on a, another layer, um, but it was just roughs that I did just, just to block things in. And as you noticed, I, I haven't done anything as far as changing any of the brush settings. I'm just using the default brush setting brush settings right now. All right, so we've got our, uh, our basic shape blocked in here. We could do a little more color a little bit more of it just we know it's shadows but we might as well just throw a little bit more in like i said i want to do this kind of quickly i don't want to take up a lot of people's times people's time yeah all right so we've got that blocked in all right i'm gonna move this guy over um because otherwise I won't really be able to tell what I'm filling in and what's just in the background. All right, so with the same brush that I was using before, I'm gonna swap the colors. All right, and then I just wanna block all of this in with this, this mid-tone that I was using. So I'm gonna to go to my brush settings brush settings, and change off, change, <laughs> turn off the shape dynamics so that it's not pointy because uh, I just want a broad brush stroke because I just want to fill this in. So I'm going to increase the size of this brush here and just start blocking it in real quick. Again, this is how I did the Mari Laud painting. So um, have faith it will look better as we as we move on. Don't be discouraged by the fact that it, it looks like uh, it's the first painting anyone's ever done. Um, though that's not bad either. All right. So as you can see, when I'm blocking this in, um, because up up here, because of this this brush, um, it's set to 100% wet, which means um, that, well, just exactly like it says here, uh, you set the amount of paint picked up from the canvas. So basically, this is like a brush that's loaded with with paint. So in the real world if I were to paint like this, this is what would happen. I would drag my brush across and it would blend the colors. So you can kind of see, even if I just don't push quite as hard, it's already blending the colors in, blending them together kind of nicely. Um, we're already starting to get a little bit of the effect that we want here. And I could um, swap my colors. So now I've got the darker color and because I've, I've still got shape dynamics off, so I don't have the pointy brush. I've got, as if it were, like a flat brush or a filbert. Um, I can start blocking this in some more um, and loading those, those shadows in, blending those shadows in a little bit more. Um, 
my hand's covering up <laughs> the original painting, so I have to keep looking over. So let's fix that. So I'm going to move this over here. And this is one of the great things about keeping everything on separate layers. I can just move my painting over. So now I, and that's something that I used a lot when I was painting the painting for, um, for phantoms. I, I would start to paint someone, paint their cloak, and I realized that it wasn't really in the spot I wanted. All I had to do was select the layer and I could move it wherever I wanted to and I could resize it or whatever. So huge advantage um, in that regard anyway to um, painting digitally. So back to my brush. So you can see here these folds are pretty deep. Um, so I'm going to go, let's see. So if you didn't notice, the, the two colors I've used so far, they end up over here in your, your recent colors. That's one of the cool things I like about Photoshop. Um, it also does that with your brushes. I mean, I've only used one brush so far, but it, it keeps a history of the brushes right here. So um, if you need to go back to a brush or you forget, um, you, you'll have a few little hints that you can jump back to. So we're going to fill in those colors some more. Yeah, so we've got these colors here. So I, those are in the history. I want to go darker to um, make these folds deeper. So I'm just going to drag this down just real quick here to something darker. See, so we got our brush and I'm just going to decrease the size. We're still using the... Yep, just make sure we're still using the right brush. All right, go down smaller. Now see, it's coming in pretty well, um, but because it's it's wet on wet, basically, it, the, the tool thinks it's a wet brush on wet paint. So if I make this larger, see it, it comes in, but, and I'm pushing pretty hard here. It, eventually it starts to come in because it's building up. But another thing that you can do, and this is, something that I learned that's really handy, especially if you're someone that's trying to paint digitally, but want it to look more painterly, more like it's done with real paint and a real brush. Um, I'll turn off this shape dynamics again. That's one thing I've noticed. Um, if you switch brushes, the brush that you were using switches back to its defaults. So I had turned off shape dynamics here and then if I jump over to a different brush and use it, and then I decide that I want to go back to this brush, it went back to the default, so I have to go and turn that off again. And um, the best way to fix that is to just turn this into a brush. I don't remember how to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, down here. You can do it from down here. Create a new brush. So... I'm going to leave shape dynamics off, but I'm going to decrease the size. And what I'm going to do up here, like I was saying, so right now it's, this is 100% wet. All right. So I'm going to drop it down to zero. So now it's a dry brush. I'll increase the size here so you can kind of see. So now look at that. It, it looks like I'm painting with bristles. It just wipes it right in there and it, it's not blending. So see, I'll show you again at 100%. When I do that same thing, it barely shows up because the, the paint is really wet. But if we turn it all the way down to zero, then we've got a dry brush that we're using. So what we can do is with it at zero, we can go in and, and draw these in real quick where we know the folds are the stiffest or the darkest, I guess. My placement's off a little, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, so then there's this one here. And it goes over here. And this comes over. And there's there's more going on over here, too. Um, so we've got those built in, blocked in. So I can just move it up even just to 10% if I want to. And lay them in some more. See, it's it's already going back to how more how it was before. As you can see like that. So whether it's set to like four or 100, um, I've noticed hasn't 
doesn't make a huge difference um, as far as for it being wet paint on wet paint. All right, so now we've got these hard shadows. We're not going to cry about it. But what we are going to do is we're going to switch the colors again. All right. And then we're just going to go back over this a little bit just to blend these a little more. Okay. And then we'll swap again and go in and block in some more of the dark. So you can see you, how you can start building the light and the dark pretty easily and pretty quickly just just with a few brush settings um, the other thing you can do I'll I'll build this in here and this is the other the other brush is this I've got it listed here Kyle's paint box blender 50 whoops I <laughs> didn't mean to cross it out um, so if I go to Kyle's paint box wet blender 50 you can see that's got a little hand, a little finger next to it, like it's going to smudge it because it's a smudge tool. All right, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn off the shape dynamics again because I don't want it to be pointy. And I'm going to turn transfer on because I want it to be pressure sensitive. And then, so what we can do is if we just push very gently, that's too hard, um, we can blend these together all right you could even just run it right across the whole thing very very gently i'm barely even um touching the the stylus on this on the screen here all right so that's another way that you can blend it it doesn't take much uh, i've also got the strength set to 90 which i think is the default um it, i haven't touched that but yeah this is another good way to blend so you can either do it like that, or you can use the brush and you can paint it. Uh, I like to do a combination of both until I kind of get it where I want it. Got this, yeah, so we've got the brush. How's this thing looking here? I'm going a little crazy with the cheese whiz over here. Uh, we'll get that brightened back up a little bit because that, that shadow right there is tighter than that it's not so wide um same up here um but you know it's it's close for for what i'm trying to show you it'll work and then we're going to need some highlights um to bring it out more uh, or as to make it pop as people say um whoops hold down my alt key while i've got the brush chosen and we're going to Pull something a little bit brighter. Uh, I'm actually going to go a little more yellowy orange because I want it to stand out more. Because that's pretty much what I did for the Mari Laud painting, um, and that's just kind of what I like. It'll also show up more for this, so it'll be a little more obvious. All right, so we've got it set. By default, you know, still at 100. So it, it, when we lay this in, it'll it'll kind of lay it in kind of soft. Okay. As you can see. Or I can drop that thing down to zero. And assuming that this is one of the edges. And I can just lay that in real quick. Same with this one. That might be, whoops, that might be kind of cool to have it right here, just starting to come out right here might be cool. All right, so I'm just kind of throwing these in, as you can see. All right, and then we're going to bring the wetness back up again. All right, we'll just kind of use it to blend it a little bit. And it's okay if, if we go too far with it as far as um, covering too much because um, we can uh, 
I'll swap colors and then I'll come back over here and grab my red that I was using for my midtone. And then we can uh, cover it back up a little bit, blend it a little more. And if I really wanted to redo it, so to speak, I could drop this thing down to zero. And uh, just lay it back over top. Then bring it back up a little so that it it's more wet on wet paint again and blend it and that's how you get that that nice dimension you just keep doing layer over layer over layer light dark light dark you know push it back and then you pull it forward okay, put this in here all right so now with, I don't know how long have I been doing this, 10 minutes maybe? So we've already got some pretty nice, nice uh, folds going on here with some cool lighting, some nice light and shadow. And I could even, if I wanted to, um, I could bring it up even more as if it were close to the fire, which is kind of what I had done before. Whoops. Drop that down to zero so that we're laying in nice hot color. Same thing here. Maybe here too. Just for funsies. And then bring this wet back up a little bit. Lay some more in here. Blend it here. Blend it here. Yeah, and then we can swap these colors. This is getting too crazy. Tone it down a little bit. And, and that's pretty much what you're doing. Pushing it back, bringing it forward. And then you can come back and grab this wet blender again. I'm going to turn off shape dynamics again because I don't want it um, pointy by default. <laughs> turn the pressure back on again. Bring it up and see if we could zoom in more. And we can blend it that way too if we want to. We want to really blend it. I don't like that, but we could do it. All right. Again, with this this brush, any of the oil brushes, just this one, just because this is the one I'm using, I turn off these, that one. So if we, again, turn that down to zero, if we wanted it to look like um, we, we were at the end of the painting, and all we needed to do was throw in some highlights with a couple of brush strokes and we wanted those to really look like they were painted in. You know, so we do this, we go down to zero and paint them in. You could do a big one. And swap the colors. Bring it up a little, blend it a little. Or just leave it, you know. You zoom out, and it looks like it was, it was thrown in there. Blend it some more if we want to. See, it just kind of pulls it too. It's really cool. It's because it's acting like paint. So, cool thing. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I've I've made the lights and darks more extreme and just did it quickly, but um. So that is a pretty easy way to get a painterly effect with, I mean, I used two brushes, but I could have just done it with one. And then another thing that I did, um, I actually did it more towards the start of the Four Phantoms painting, but I didn't want to do that with this one until we got to this 
this point um, is adding another layer on top for texture. So all that I did for this is I took this texture, which is the original one that I had that I'm using for the background. I made a copy of it and I brought it up to the top above everything that I painted. Okay, and I'm going to turn that on. And now you can see it's given this some, some more texture, um, which I really like that look and not everyone likes it, but um, to me, it, it just makes it look a little bit older. And all that I did, like I said, was I, I took the background texture, made a copy, brought it up here, and then I added noise to it. I just went up to here, up here to filter noise, um, add noise and uh, uniform and I drag it up to 50%, but you can do it as much as you want, you know, or as little as you want, or not at all, whatever. You can change it to Gaussian if you want. And you can see it changing here in the image. If I crank it way up, you'll see, see it's starting to get darker in more spots. This one, they shift more. Um, so that's something else that you can play with. And again, you can find lots of other textures out there online that will do a much better job. Um, because they make money off of making textures. So they know what they're doing. Um, but you can do this and not have to spend any money and still get a really cool look. And you can make your own textures and sell them, <laughs> whatever, share them with people. Um, so one thing I want to make sure that I mention, um, I mentioned this top layer texture. Um, I. I think I forgot to mention that um, this needs to be, this texture needs to be set to multiply. Okay, if you set it to normal, it's going to be ugly. Um, so I've got the opacity at 50%. Um, obviously, you can adjust that as needed. But um, so once you lay that, that texture over top of your painting, you'll want that on multiply so that it's just showing the texture and not showing everything because otherwise it just covers it all up. Um, but as you can see, if I zoom in more, depending on where you set your opacity, you'll get more or less texture, you know, depending on what you're looking for. Um, you'll also, you also might want to play around with um, the brightness and the contrast or the hue and the saturation of the texture. Um, depending on just what you want your final look and feel to be like this, th this at a hundred percent, that might be too dark. And it might, if you're going to print, it might print too dark or it might print too red or to whatever color um, that you might not notice is really in there until you crank the opacity up. So if I bring the opacity way down, now you can really, and now it's at zero, but now you can, just see the paint again and the, the texture that's underneath. And then if I adjust it, we can see, see it coming, starting to come through. Now it gives it some interesting texture, but it, it will have an effect on, on your entire painting or whatever layers are underneath it. So that's something to be aware of. And I usually kind of get this, adjustment made at the beginning um, I'll, I'll paint a little bit and then I'll turn it off and take a look and then turn it on and see if it it's really the opacity I want if it's really the colors that I want because that's going to be your final image you want to make sure that um, you're painting underneath it with it turned on the whole time so that you know what it's really going to look like you don't want to paint your entire painting with the texture turned off and then turn it on. And all of a sudden you're like, Oh shit, the whole thing's like way too dark or way too red. And now I got to make all these adjustments. Like that's something you'll, you'll want to figure out kind of towards the beginning and maybe do a quick study of whatever it is you actually want to paint, you know, just block in just, just like I did here, you know, just 10 or 15 minutes, just throw in some colors that you're pretty sure you're going to use, get in some lights and darks. So you, you'll know kind of 
what those look like once you turn that texture on and see if that's really what you expected and that's how you want it to look when you're done. And you can always make changes down the road and at the end if you don't like it, but it can be you know, a little bit easier on you down the road if, if you can get it a little closer to what you want towards the beginning. I think that is pretty much everything. Um, the only other thing, let's see. Oh yeah, one other thing that I was doing on mine, I kind of like, you know, this is another thing uh, that I like as far as trying to make the paintings look a little more traditional, like traditional media as if they were really painted with paint. Uh, again, using this wet blender, turn off my shape, my tr turn my transfer on. Um, in the Mari Laud painting, you, if you look closely, a, a lot of my edges, they kind of just bleed into the paper because when I paint with acrylics, that's often how I leave the edges of, of my paintings. So I would, I'm just pulling some of this into the paper and that is how I would leave it. If I were doing a real painting, I would just have it like out like that. And you could also use that if you want your paint to look like it's bleeding more, you know, a little more like watercolor or like it's um, a really watered down acrylic. You like it as if you're doing a wash. And again, you can turn the strength down if you want to, if you don't want it to smear so much. But that's another cool thing that you can do. And you can even do it underneath if you want to, you know, underneath your painting because you know, maybe you don't want to ruin it. So I'll show you, we can go underneath here. We'll switch back to our brush. Okay. And let's say we will paint this in underneath. Uh, and we're just literally just going to use this as a, a bleed layer. All right. So I've got a little bit painted in here. As you can see it's underneath our other one. So then we'll go to our wet blender again, turn the strength down a lot, turn off shape, turn on pressure, and then we'll just bleed it. So that it looks like it's part of the painting, but it's faded. I mean, I could even pull it this way if I wanted to. I'll turn it up a little so you can see it. Well, I'll turn it up a lot so you can see it. Let's see how it's pulling it. If I turn off this, you can see it more. That's where it actually is. Turn on transfer. You can blend it more. And if we need more, turn on the brush. Throw some back in. Let's say we want it to be that dark color that we want to bleed out. So I switch to the dark color. We'll turn wet down to zero. So we're just getting a nice thick paint here. We're still painting underneath, underneath the other one. See, but we've got this here. And then we can go back to our blender. Pen pressure, increase the size. We can do it that way. I mean, we can use it to to have it fade out any which, which way we want, however you want to pull it. And you could even, if you wanted to, you could even jump back to our top layer where we were painting. Give it, some, grab the brush, give it some wetness. And paint it in on here. And then do the same thing. You would probably want to um, make a brush with those settings so you don't have to keep doing that every single time. That's pretty annoying. So you could do it right there too. 
Then you've got your one underneath, your one on top. So you can kind of play around with them. And you know, and then if you get it where you want, you can let's say that that's what I love and that's how I want it. I can just merge these two. Now it's all one layer again. All right, I think that's pretty much everything. I just kind of wanted to show you what tools I used and how I used them. And it's up to you now. <laughs> Do something cool, post it, share it with me, tag me. Most importantly, paint something.